it's no problem. And if this has got a 99% up rate, I love it. Okay, so let's just do that 14 pages again right quick here. Don't think so. Look at that. Hey, were you asking where the table was? It's right there. There's the table. There's where you get the 68 for a excluded. Eight tenths of that must be 54 for included. That's where you take care of the fact that they are cutting the threads, cutting the shank. Same way on this one and that one for a higher strength bolt. And then just plain old threaded parts that you don't know what they are. But you know they're F sub U's. And then I'm not going to go through all this, but I would suggest you go through it. It would be a good idea. Tension on the gross area, old stuff. Tension on the net area, uh, gross section yield, net section fracture, block shear strength, all of the things that go on here. Use of BS. You remember what use of BS was? Anybody? Uh, was the was for block shear. Tell me again. Welded? No. It was where the back of the plate... Well, here you go. Here was one of them right here. We have coped the top, and you have more than one column of bolts. And so when you have a something on here tending to pull this little piece out, the stresses are distributed not linearly and cause higher stresses on some of the part of the steel than other, and they made you use use of BS, I forget, you only got half or something instead of 100%, was the stress distribution down on the bottom. Then they had 15 things they showed you, use of BS, use of BS is equal to 1, is equal to 1. The only one I think they showed you was this one, uh, more than one column, it was a 0.5. Uh, so design strength for sh bolt and shear, they added all the numbers up, they got 71 uh, slip critical, this is a mistake in my book, I'm not sure if it's still in yours or not, <clears throat> the numbers, actually the numbers from last year, when there was a different, the, the, some of the numbers changed, as they do. Um, he's got the right number on page 398, he just forgot to make the change here. So it's 38 kips, tension on the gross area, tension on the net area, block shear strength, lowest of everything was the slip critical, and it usually is. So good enough. It'll take the 38 kips we need, and it will uh, back up with bearing strengths if it comes to that. We hope it doesn't. It usually works out that way, yes. Usually when... That's fine. Then we won't design it as a slip critical. And if you don't design it as a slip critical, then it'll slip. And in most buildings, when it slips, it only does it once because they only get these horrible wind loads once in the life of the building, and we don't care. But in a bridge, when the truck goes in this span and the bolts go... And then he goes to the other side of the span, and the bolts go, and then the bolts go. Did you see that? The little boat fell out. <laughs> well, the little boat fatigued, and it broke. And, you know, that's not that bad. There's one less bolt out of 40 in there. Probably live with that. By the time we inspect it, we notice three bolts are missing. And so we got to have a real slip critical connection and put no more load on it than that for some cases. All right. Now we can get all of these numbers, most of them, tables for bolt strengths. Um, there are bolts that, uh, there are tables that will give you these strengths for shear. There are tables for end pull out. Uh, distance between the bolts, pulling the little plug out. They're, they have some assumptions in them that you pretty much have to go by, but they're not severe, and they're commonly what you use anyway. If you get outside of that range, then you just have to know how to where they got the numbers from and do your own numbers. 
So he wants to design, determine the strength of the connection we just did based on shear, slip critical, and bearing strength. So we already know the numbers. In summary, it was a set of four three-quarter inch group A uh, th shear threads included single shear. The spacing of the bolts was three inches, and the end dimension was one and a half inches. L clear was this number minus a half of a drill size. Uh, that was uh, bolt size plus only one sixteenth. And this uh, L clear was the distance between the center of the holes minus a complete hole size as opposed to a half of a hole size. Thickness of the plate was three inch and they were uh, standard holes. So he says from manual page 7 1. All right, I got a table 7 1. For three quarter group A, uh, for three quarter inch, there's three quarter inch. Group A, here's group A, group B, crummy A307s. So I have pla uh, shear planes through the threads and shear planes where the threads are excluded. Ours were included, and the connection itself was either in single or double shear. 17.9 kips per bolt is the strength of the bolts. That's not that hard to work the number out. It's just always easier to just go pick it out of a table someplace. Notice the tables go up to about an inch and a, inch and a half diameter bolts. That doesn't mean to say that that much load in the bolt won't just crush the plate into jelly, so that still has to be checked too. The 17.9 is what we got. Uh, 17.9. I don't know where it is, to tell you the truth. It's, it's too far back now. 17.9 kips per bolt. Example 7 4 is what he says. Example 7 4, shear strength of one bolt. Something's fishy here. Strength of one bolt, 23.86. Very good. All right. That's nice. Look at that, man. Wow. Goosebumps. Yeah. Fee. We didn't bother putting any fees on this thing yet because we weren't there yet. We were getting all the way to the end and we put all the fees on at one time. Fee is 0.75. Multiply our number times 0.75, you get the number in the table. I say, why didn't you leave that off? He says, well, look, we got people who really do this for a living, not like you. They just want to know the number with everything included, including the fee. So that can get confusing. Be careful. Next, he would like to know the slip critical strength. From table 7-3 for a group A bolt with a coefficient of friction of 0.3, use a standard hole, single shear, 9.49. These are group A bolts. That's the right table. Group A bolts. We've got another page probably with group B somewhere. It just, just takes up the whole page. They were three-quarter inch diameter. They were STD standard holes. They were loaded in single loading. We are not doing the allowed stress. We're doing the LRFD, 9.49 kips per bolt. You and I got something else, but well, no, we should have got 9.49, shouldn't we? Why? Because our fee was 1. So let's just see right quick for slip critical. 9.49. He tells us down at the bottom. There we go. I'm going to say, surely he tells us, uh, for the standard holes, one, we take care of the non-standard holes, slotted in one direction or another, and it's a little harder to get, you know, to have the bolt uh, bear up against something at point eighty-five, and then this kind, point seven. Dang if I know. Lots of slap, lolly. Don't know. Keys right above it. Jeez, smart Alec. <laughs> Long slotted holes, transverse or parallel to the line of the force. And what is OVS? 
Oh, yes. And what does STD stand at home? All right. So there's two things we could have pulled right out of the table. And I would have lots rather he did this as number one. And then he went in and did that as number two. And then he did this as uh, we did, you know, because this is just a different thing than the other things. This thing has one thing, and this thing has a bunch of little subparts. Bearing strength. Uh, there's two tables. Well, that makes sense because we have end holes and we have interior holes. So he says for the inner bolts from table 7-4, there's table 7-4. These are three-quarter inch diameter bolts. Here's three-quarter inch diameter bolts. We have a loud stress. We have the good stuff, LRFD. The fee is already attached. He uses a small case R, lowercase r, to indicate just one bolt, like he uses a big R for the whole connection or something. Then he goes down to, he says, are your spaces, this is the strength based on bolt spacing between the bolts of interior bolts. That's like this. Our bolts, they're either three inches, is pretty common, and recommended, permitted two and two-thirds times diameter of the bolt, but, you know, you may have to have a discussion with the guy with a wrench or the lady with a wrench because that's that's getting it pretty close. Ours were three inches. They were 58 KSI or 65 KSI ultimate on the steel. That was 58 and 78.3. You will also notice that for a standard well, actually, for any of these things, you see the 78.3 coming in a bunch of times and down here. That is limited by what they call the full bearing strength. That's the crushing number. In other words, the tearing of a, a plug on this size bolt was smaller than the crushing number. And so you can tell that crushing number because there's no reason for them to be the same like this in so many places. So that one was limited by crushing. So you actually have the numbers in this table for both tearing the plug out and the crushing strength of the plate. Now you say, well, I don't care. They're good, right? Well, yeah, they're good. If, on the other hand, I gave you uh, three-inch spacing... A seven eighths inch bolt and ask you for a three inch spacing or for a two and two thirds inch spacing, does the crushing strength control or does the tearing between the bolt holes control? Which controls? Tearing between these two holes or crushing of the plate for a seven eighths inch bolt spaced at two and two-thirds of uh, times seven-eighths on a 58 KSI plate. Well, you see the 72.9? I don't see it anywhere else. Look at this 91.4, 91.4, 91.4. Guess what that 91.4 is? That's the crushing of the plate. And that means that because this isn't this number you see repeated a whole bunch of times, that was controlled by pulling the little plug out. They say, how the devil would I ever figure out that? You don't have to. You just If, you, if I ask you that, then you're going to have to work them both out and see what controlled when the 72.9 came out of your calculations. That is correct. Plate crushing is where the little... Uh, L clear was so long that it just wasn't possible to pull out the plug. And the plate crushed. And do you remember how much it crushed when everybody said, no, 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 that's the no, no more, please. Quarter inch, that's exactly right. And he tells you that, that down here, incidentally. 
He says, spacing to get the full bearing strength possible under any conditions, including pulling the little plug out or crushing the plate. See that there? That's called S full A. It says decimal value has been rounded to the nearest sixteenth of an inch. Uh, for these holes right here, these are how long the spacing would have to be. And... I don't really see where he says that that's what these numbers are, but that's what they are. In other words, if your bolt spacing between the two long, between the two holes is this much or more, you'll crush the plate, and you can forget about <coughs> calculating the the L clear shear the plug out numbers. It's what he calls spacing required to get the full possible bearing strength. Okay, now you just have to tell me to go up or down or left or right there and down a little, left or right, over to the right or left. Okay, this one. No, all the way. All the way to the end. What? What? Okay. I'm sorry. That, that is correct. That's what he's telling you here. If you have your spacing, this is, oh, I see what you're saying. That's where the 63, 5.3 is coming from. Thank you. I forgot about that. You're right. This is where the 63 is coming from. It's coming from this number right here because up to that number, it's a tie between crushing the plate and pulling out the plug. And he's saying that if you have the spacing bigger than S full, you will get 65.3. So that's how I was easily able to find out the duplicates. You know, you'll find nothing any, uh, nothing matching itself like 65.3, 65.3, 65.3. That's crushing the plates. For 58 KSI steel. For this one, it's 73.1. There you see the 73.1. 73.1, 73.1, 73.1, .1, and also you'll notice on the second layer of all this, there isn't anything bigger than 73.1, because there can't be, because you've crushed the plate. Note, star, when plate crushing starts to control, this happens. Uh, this is a table for a one-inch thick plate. So we don't know what the thickness of the plate is. He says, look, I'm going to just give you the numbers for a one-inch plate, and if yours is only half an inch thick, guess what you should do? I said, I don't know. He says, well, then I don't think you ever ought to do this for a living. <laughs> Next. Well, okay, I got it. You multiply times a half because you only get half of these numbers. So that's what we're going for now. We're going for bearing strength, inner bolts, edge bolts, edge end bolts. Inner bolts, it is a three-quarter inch group A, three-inch spacing, three-quarter inch. A group A has got nothing to do with it because the bolts aren't ever going to fail in bearing. Uh, S is equal to three. Here's our S is equal to three. Here's the type of hole that we have. This is what we're talking about right here. We have one of these kind of F sub U's in there. 58 was our A36 steel. We go to the three-quarter inch bolt, 78.3 kips per inch. 78.3 kips per inch. 78.3 kips per inch. Since our plate was only three-eighths of an inch thick, for the thinner of the two plates, we get 29.4. And, of course, it's already got the fee on it. For the edge bolts... It only gives you two edge distance, one and a quarter and two. If you don't have that, you can either interpolate or you can do it yourself. <clears throat> Hours on the end was... Go back and take a look at it now. Hours on the end was an inch and a half. And so this is the strength between those two bolts.
And here it is for the end. Uh, we don't have an inch and a half. So I'll tell you what. Well, we'll just take... Well, I was trying to find out a minute ago. Let's just take an inch and a quarter. If it's still okay, then we know ours is, is at an inch and a half is perfect. It's okay. Have a standard hole. Here are only two choices. 58 KSI steel, three-quarter inch diameter bolts, have a strength of 44 kips per inch thick plates per bolt. 44 kips. Our plate was three-eighths of an inch thick. 16.5 kips per bolt. And I forget what we got, but that was more than we needed, whether we had uh, his end distance and ours gave more. So that's a quick way to pull all the numbers out of the tables, and you're welcome to use them. The table itself, what page? It's on page 7-28. All the others are very close by. Design examples, nothing more than an analysis example. All you've got to do first is pick something and try it out. You can kind of go backwards because you can use the tables. They want you to use a certain size of bolts. Once a 5 8 inch diameter bolt. So you can go in the tables and pick out how strong the bolts are so you figure out how many you need. So he puts the numbers in. You could put eight in a row and eight in a row and make the plate a little longer and destroy a little less of its uh, net section fracture. Or you can do it like this. Somebody's got to decide. That's part of the, part of the game. And from then, in, then on, that's all you're going to do. Same thing we did before. Find out how much load, 1.2 dead, 1.6 live. Calculate how many bolts, total load necessary, divided by how strong the bolts are in shear. You say, well, wait, what about bearing? I'm going to assume shear controls and bearing going to work. Why do I know it's going to work? I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make the little slot links longer. You say, well, the little slot links may get so long that they won't control. Crushing will control. We'll find a way. You can almost always find a way. And if you can't find a way, well, then what you're probably going to do is you're going to have to add some more bolts to get the bearing strength down where it's, it's acceptable. For instance, if you have a plate and you decide to use one bolt, you may have a problem. That bolt may be so strong it doesn't work in gross section yield, it doesn't work in bearing, it doesn't work in crushing, it doesn't work in anything. You say, well, okay, I'll move it back, same plate, I'll move it back to here. Oh, well, that may not be good enough. You need more bolts. So you can check the numbers here. Got several more examples, and they're all the same. Of course, that's why this is such a nice book. Got tons of examples so that you can go see different numbers. Uh, check them out. A lot of repetition. Tension area. Obviously block shear. <coughs> you see anything I got scratched out? Oh, that's allowed stresses. Why? But I'll leave it for you to check out these examples. See you next time. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question. I was doing the homework for on Wednesday, Stu. But I was able to do the first two problems. Okay. But the last problem is 7.8. Yeah. And I thought you would cover it in class today, but you didn't. Well, I sure been trying to keep up. But in other words, so, you need today's lecture to work 7.8. Well, yeah. I mean, um, well, I mean, I, I looked at it, but I was like, no. I mean, I could I could teach myself from the book, but I just thought maybe he's going to teach it today, so I waited. What what on it was different from what we've done so far? It's about like prying action and stuff. No like prying. That. Yeah, but it, no prying. Uh, no, I don't want you to work any of those problems. Um, 
But in the book it said include Prime, but then on your, your website it said don't, don't include, include Prime. Prime. That's why I have it starred. No, yeah, but ignore the Prime stuff, action. But the other equations you haven't talked about either. Okay, then it was in tension. We haven't done the tension on the bolts yet? Yeah, I believe so. All right, yeah, uh, I understand. Uh, omit it for now, and I'll email everybody. You're going to email me first because okay. my mind is... You're going to say uh, problem 7.8 not due till you cover it in class. Assigned then. Okay. okay. And I'll forward that to everybody. Okay. Thank you. Don't know who was next? Um, yes, sir. Um, last, after the test, I went in there and sat down on the computer. The only one that was open. A, a gentleman sitting across, I guess he was working on the test. No, I don't think anything. I just no, just, just don't know. No, not, not a problem. He was, he was worried about it. No, but uh, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't even know who he is necessarily. You know, you would just go ahead and talk about the quiz. So I need him someplace else next time. Yes, sir. Do you know? I have no idea. Before the Q drive I'm hoping, you know, at the very least, since you've had it, you know, that may help you decide. Yeah. But I'm really hoping to have them by then. Might run into this class. Okay, and so you don't want me to pick on you when you come in late? Correct. I mean, what's the, you, what fun am I going to have? <laughs> if I come in late or if I don't make it. If you come in late and I start on you, we'll just go like this. <laughs> you know, and I say, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Sure.